Okay, enough talk. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, again, I'm going to start out in Lightroom today. Everything that we do today, you can do in the program as a standalone. I just happen to already have a little collection here in Lightroom of all of the images that I'm going to access. So it's a little bit easier for me to go through here today. Um, I do a large amount of my editing basics here in Lightroom. I like to use this as my base program, but if you use Aperture, if you use Photoshop, if you use Elements, it's not really going to matter. Now, I'm going to go ahead and we are going to select our image here. And I am going to go up to my file menu, down to plugin extras, and we're just going to choose Perfect Photo Suite 8. All right, so once we're inside the Photo Suite 8, from Lightroom anyways, we're going to start out here inside Perfect Layers. If you're going through Aperture and you choose Perfect Photo Suite 8, you'll also start here. And if you open the program as a standalone, I always suggest that you start out inside Perfect Layers. I think it's the easiest place to start. One of the other reasons that's great is when you're working with textures and borders, you want to be able to manage the ones that you want to use. On the left-hand side of the screen, usually you're going to see the Files tab. This is our, our quick browser here inside Layers, and it's a way for you to find your images very quickly and easily, which is great. We also have the Extras tab, and this is the one that we're going to be working primarily with today. There are the On One Extras, and I'm suspecting you guys are probably familiar with these. They're the ones that are included in the suite when you get it. Um, backgrounds include everything from walls, studio backdrops, skies, everything separated down into categories. We have borders, which again are kind of separated down into certain categories here. Everything from grungier to classic film style borders. And then we also have textures. And we have wonderful textures. You can actually recreate weather style looks. You can add paper textures to make your images look like things like posters or postcards. Um, now, underneath the On One Extras category is going to be your user extras. These are the ones that you actually upload into the suite. I, again, I love making textures and borders, so I have a ton in here that are mine that I've created, ones that I've gotten from friends, ones that I've gotten from the On One website. Um, I use them all the time, and I use them a lot with my images whether I'm editing for others or whether I'm editing my own photos. And I can open up just like any of these, I can open up any of these different categories and you'll find the ones that I've gone through and created. This is where you're going to access all of the textures and borders here inside Perfect Layers. Now, before we get started, I want to show you guys how to manage those extras and upload your own. If you go up to the File menu, scroll down to manage extras and it's going to open up this dialog box here on the left hand side are all of the categories you'll see that you've got your backgrounds borders textures as well as these individual suite products so black and white effects enhance portrait and resize each one of these different programs here give you the ability to use presets if i open up the perfect effects these are all of the different perfect effects presets that are inside the program. The extras manager is actually great for uploading everything. So if you get a whole bunch of presets, you get a whole bunch of borders and you get a whole bunch of textures from us, instead of having to go into individual programs and open them all up and load them, you can do that all here in this dialog. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the borders category and we'll open it up. You'll see that I have quite a few different categories here that I've created. Um, I have ones that I've actually made myself, a whole bunch of the Polaroid borders when I click on it. Some of these are ones that I've gotten from uh, on one, and some of them are ones that I've actually scanned in on my own. One of the best ways to make real authentic uh, film borders is to just scan the film in on an actual physical scanner. Uh, I know a lot of people out there shoot digital and, and may not have ever actually shot film, but film actually did have these really beautiful borders. And most of the ones that we use in the suite are just scanned in versions of the ones that you can actually access out in the real world. So a couple of the Polaroid ones that I have are just real scanned in 
negatives, or borders from real film. So if there is a border that you really love out in the real world, just scan it in on a regular old scanner, and you can save it as a JPEG file and just load it up here. Now, when you're ready to import anything into the Extras Manager, just click the Import button down at the bottom of your screen. Before you do that, you want to make sure that you select the category you're going to be importing to. So I'm going to import borders. That's why I selected it. Now, it'll open up your computer. You can go through and you can navigate to where those borders are. I put everything in very easy to find folders on my desktop, so I wouldn't have to spend a lot of time uh, talking you guys through how to do this. So hopefully you're good with that. But I've got a couple of different weathered wood borders. You can't really see them in the actual little PNGs because they blend into the images, so they don't look like much, but I promise there are borders there, I swear. You can select one or you can select multiple borders. I'm going to select all of them here and go ahead and click open. Now, this is the part that I really, really recommend you do when you're when you're creating or using your own borders or textures. You want to add multiple different categories. If you just create one that's called, for me, I would call it Liz's borders. It would be, it would be full. So I separate everything down. You'll see I've got halftone frames, which is. Um, I'll actually show you how to use the halftone frames. They're one of my favorites. It's got this really beautiful dot pattern around the edges. I have my Polaroid borders. I have these splatter borders that were created that I love, um, and so on. So I suggest that you add a category for each group of borders or textures you add in. It's going to save you a lot of time so that you know where to go. So I'll call these weathered wood borders. I'll go ahead and click OK. We'll click OK one more time, and it's going to go through, and it's going to upload them. Now, while it does that, really quickly, I actually learned the difference between a frame and a border the other day, and I thought that I would share it with you because I'm nerdy, and I think that that's really exciting. Um, a frame doesn't cut into your image when you apply it. So think about when you buy a picture frame. And you go to the store and you put your photo behind it, you should be able to see your entire photo through the frame. Or you can customize a frame to fit around your entire photo. You shouldn't lose any of the information from your image when you use a frame. So think of frames just like you would think of a frame that's up on your, on your wall or on your mantelpiece. What borders are, similar to a frame in the sense that it goes around your entire image, but it cuts into your photo to create a texturized edge. Um, it, it can burn in, it can create really strange edges, it can cut into your photo, and basically there are going to be parts of your image that you won't be able to see through a border. That's the best way to think of the difference between a border and a frame. Most people don't know that difference, so now you guys are smarter than a very large portion of the world. I learned that the other day and thought it was really exciting. Now. Once we're done in the Extras Manager, you can go ahead and click Close. Let's go ahead and start actually adding stuff, because that's I'm suspecting why you guys were here. For this photo, I'm going to go ahead and open up my borders, and we'll open up the weathered wood borders. And here you're actually going to be able to see what these borders really look like. Um, one of the reasons why you can't see it in that little dialog that we were just looking at is because the background is white and the border itself is actually white. Um, when you're here inside perfect layers, there's a gray overlay in the background so that you can actually see what the border is going to do to your image. Now we have lots of different options here. Everything from circle, square, rectangles, all that fun kind of stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose one of these two. They look about the same size or dimensions as my image. I would suggest you stick towards the dimensions of your image when you're adding borders. If I had cut this into a square, I may use one of the square or one of the circular options. That might work a little bit better. Um, but for this image, I'm going to keep it as a rectangle. So I'm going to choose one of these rectangular options. I'll go ahead and double click. And this dialog is going to pop up. We want to choose the bottom option. It's called Add as a Layer. You always want to add your borders as a separate layer. We'll go ahead and select OK, and it'll add it on top of the photo. Now, this border is a little bit smaller 
than the original image. And that's going to happen from time to time. I didn't size these together to be the exact same size for a reason. I wanted to make sure that I could show you guys this. So this is going to be a common problem that you run into when you're applying borders and textures. There's a really great uh, workaround when you run into this. Here in Layers, go up to the top left-hand corner of your screen and select the Transform tool. Then on the top right-hand corner, there is a button called Fill. What this does is it resizes whatever layer you have selected, which is this border, and fits it to the image that's underneath. So when I go ahead and click Fill, it's going to automatically size itself correctly to the photo. And once it's resized, I have to click the Apply button to apply that change. Now, most of the time when you're working on borders, you're not going to have to worry about the fact that if you upsize it by a little bit, it's going to look funky or it's going to look weird. Um, if you have a tiny, tiny, tiny little border that's like, here, I'm going to shrink this on purpose. If you have a border that's like this small and you want to upsize it to your image, it may not look the best. Uh, you do have to pay attention to the fact that your images and your borders may be different sizes and they should be relatively close in size or things may start to look a little stretched. Pulling borders in to fit an image that is smaller is much easier than doing the opposite. So just a little heads up when you're using borders. Now, that's a pretty quick and easy and dirty way of adding a border to your image. I've got my photo, I'm all set, this is pretty much all I want to do to it. When I go ahead and click save, what's wonderful is as long as this is a PSD file, it saves my layers on the right hand side. I have that border on top, which I can turn on and off here in that layer stack just by clicking that eye icon. And what I also really like about keeping my images as PSD files and having that layer stack is if, let's say I gave this photo to um, I was out with my uncle when this image was taken. And let's say that he doesn't really like the border. He likes the image, but the border is a little much. He wants a different one that's a little bit more simple, maybe just a plain white, white square frame. I can go back, I can delete this layer, and instead of having to go back through and re-edit my image all over again, I can just delete the layer, add another border, see if I like that one better, and go from there. So it's very, very easy. And the PSD file helps aid in the ability to, to resituate, reapply, delete, add new borders and textures. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna close that and then jump back over to Lightroom here. We're gonna go back into the program and I wanna talk to you a little bit about how to access borders in other programs. We've got our image selected. There we go. And we will go up to our file menu and down to plugin extras, and we'll choose the photo suite again. Now, you can also add textures here inside perfect layers. And the textures are very, very easy to apply, but they sometimes require a little bit more work than borders. You saw how easy it was to take that weathered wood border, apply it, you fill it to the screen, and you're good. That's pretty much all you have to do. And as long as you print the image out on white paper, because the extra edge was white, you don't really have to worry about the fact that you're going to get some sort of funky edge when you print out the photo. So it's super easy. Textures require a little bit more work. And that's perfectly okay. But it's one of those things that I think sometimes people expect borders to just work perfectly the first time around or they get frustrated because they don't really like it. You have to pay attention to what you're looking for when you're working with, uh, with a texture. I have a whole bunch of textures that I've created myself, ones that I've photographed. These are bokeh textures that I, that I took and these are available up um, through the loyalty rewards program. If you don't have access to the loyalty rewards program, you should definitely contact us and see if you are and see if you can get these. They're a lot of fun. Um, I also have a whole bunch of grunge textures that I created, and these are also available through the loyalty rewards program. So I want to make sure I mention that because you guys do have access to most of the borders and textures that I'm going to be using today, which is really nice. So all of these different textures are available through us. Now, when you're getting ready to apply a texture, 
one of the most important things to pay attention to is color. I, I love textures not just because of the actual texture of the image, but also because of the color that can enhance the image. So you'll see a couple of these are different colors. We have ones that are a lot warmer. We have ones that are almost desaturated or void of color. And then we have a couple that are just kind of monochromatic. This rusty steel one has a little bit of warmth in it, but for the most part, it's gray, dark brown, and black. So before I even add the texture, I want to make sure that I pay attention to the color that I want to add. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose this one here, which has kind of these orange corners and then this nice purple center. And I will double click to apply it. We'll do what we did before. You want to add it as a layer and click OK. And this one fits almost perfectly with this image, which is great. So I'll go up with my transform tool selected. And just like we did before, I'm going to click the fill button so that it fills into my image and go ahead and click apply. Now, I can't actually see my image anymore. I can only see the texture. With textures, you're going to want to blend them into your photo. And there are lots of different ways that you can do that. The first is just by taking the layer opacity slider and lowering this down towards zero so that you can start to see your original photo underneath. If you want a really faint texture, then you can just take this slider and drop it down to five or 10. You get this nice kind of like faint scratched look. It looks a little grungy. Maybe it's an old piece of film. Maybe it's a postcard or something that's gone through the mail. Um, and that can totally work. You lose a lot of the color that was intended to be applied to the image, but you get that nice grungy look and that may be what you're looking for. The other way that you can incorporate a texture into your image is by accessing the blending mode. And the blending mode is, this is how you're going to add it into your photo. The blending modes are separated down into categories. You have the section up towards the top, starts with darken, and these top five right here, darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, and darker color, all reference a darker contrast with the image. The ones below are lighten, screen, color dodge, linear dodge, and lighter color. These are all going to lighten up the image. So luckily they're placed kind of all together, so it's pretty easy to figure out where they are and what they are. Um, you can choose which ones are gonna work best for you. I love lighten and screen. I think they're really nice. By choosing lighten, it brings out all of the brighter pixels in the underlying image so that I can still see your face, but the texture is added to all of those grungy shadows in the background, and that looks really cool. So that could be a good option. Now down below are two of the ones that you're probably gonna use most often when adding textures, soft light and overlay. These apply an intense contrast and saturation to the image as they blend them into your photo. And for most textures, these are the ones that you're probably going to end up using. This one is, is creating a much too dark, intense look on the photo, so it's not what I'm looking for, but they're very good to, to mention. And you can go through and play around with the ones that you think are going to work best for your photo. I always, always, always suggest that you go through the entire list because you never know what's going to end up working for your photo. So choose which ones you think look best. And once you've done that, you can take the layer opacity slider and play around with it from there. Now, one of the other things that I want to talk to you about here is, let's say you really love a texture. This is really nice. It's a, it's got this purplish, orangish hue to it, and it can work great on some images. However, this photo, I don't want to add color into it. I don't really like the fact that this texture is colored. I want it to be monochromatic. What's, what's wonderful is all of these different images in our layer stack are separated. So you'll see that I actually went through and I edited this photo before um, I brought it into the suite. So I wanted to do a little bit of retouching to this photo, but I have my original image. I've got my perfect portrait layer. I've got my perfect effects layer where I did some, some adding of some sunshine there. And then I had an enhanced layer where I added a vignette. So I've got this nice layer stack and on top is my texture layer. 
because the texture is on a separate layer, I can edit it separately from the entire image. To do that, just select the layer in your layer stack and click on, for this photo, I'm gonna click on perfect black and white. I want to, I want to create a monochromatic grungy texture. So I'll choose black and white. It's going to create my monochromatic image. And from here, if I want to make an adjustment, I can do that. So let's say that this texture is a little too dark. I'll open up my tone pane. Go ahead and turn the auto levels off here. So I turned my tone pane off. This is what my image looks like, just flat monochromatic. I want to lighten it up, so I'll take my white slider and move it to the right. I can also take my brightness slider and move that to the right too. To make sure that I save a little bit of those darker tones, I can take my black slider and move it over to the right a tad as well. But now I have this nice overall brighter texture that isn't quite as intense as the one before. You can treat this texture just like you would any other image. Edit it the way that you would edit an actual photo. So maybe the center part of the image is a little too, too dark. You see how this little almost a rectangle right in the center of the texture is, is a little bit darker than the outside. Just take your brightness brush here in black and white. I've got it, I've got my mode set to lighten and I'm going to turn my perfect brush off and I'm going to up the feathering amount and the size. So I've got this nice big brush and I'm just going to paint the center here so that it's a little bit brighter. Now it's not going to make a huge difference, but it is going to make sure that this little spot right here isn't going to get too dark. I've got a little bit more of a vignette style going on, and this is going to look a little bit, a little bit better with my image. And once I'm done in here, I'll go ahead and click apply. So make any changes that you want to a texture if it's not working well with your photo. And that's pretty typical. This happens all the time. You get a texture, it looks really cool, and then you add it and it's kind of like, oh, okay, that you know, it could look better. So know that you have the ability to edit these any way that you want to. All right, so we've got our new perfect black and white texture layer. Make sure that your original texture layer underneath is hidden. You can delete it if you don't want to use it by selecting it and clicking the delete layer button in your layer stack, or you can just hide it by turning that little eye icon so that it looks like it's shut. I've got my black and white layer chosen, and now I can go through and I can select which one is going to work best. Now I like the option here for overlay or soft light. I think that this looks a little bit better now that I've removed that color information and I've lightened up the center. I'm just going to take my opacity and lower it down so I get a bit of grunge, and that's pretty much it. Now one of the other things that's really nice is that you can also create a mask. And the textures don't always work, unfortunately, with your entire photo. Because this is a portrait, there's this whole area right in the center that I don't necessarily want affected by the texture. So we have two different masking tools, the masking brush and the masking bug. Um, I like to use the masking brush because I like to make very specific masks, but the masking bug can also work really well let's say if you want to create a vignette style of a mask. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that masking bug there. Go ahead and select it. Go up to my tool options bar and choose my type drop down menu and select radial. Then I'll click in my image and it's going to add a radial masking bug that I can use to situate near my image. So I'm going to go ahead and start out by sizing it so that it fits kind of this whole center of her face. The dotted line around the outside is the feathering around the edge of the mask. I'm going to create a large feather because I want it to be a pretty soft transition between where the mask is. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Now I've got my mask, I'm good to go. On the right hand side, when I click on the layer, that mask will commit and I can continue to play around with things like the opacity of the layer 
and so on. So I have access to being able to edit this mask continuously and edit this layer continuously. This will work the same with borders as well. So if you have a border that has maybe, let's say you've got, I'll open this up so you can actually see it. So I have all of these splatter borders here. And let's go ahead and we'll take a closer look at some of these. You'll see that a few of these splatter borders have a couple of weird little dots right here. Maybe I don't necessarily like those. I can mask them out. Or maybe there's something that juts into the image that I don't really like. I need to mask out a little bit of the edges of these. So I can take that masking brush and I can cut in and I can basically build my own edge to make sure that I incorporate all parts of my photo. So everything is editable, everything. You don't, you don't ever have to feel like you're stuck with anything because I know that that can be kind of confusing and you wanna be able to have access to all of these different options. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and click save and it's gonna go through and it's gonna save my, my new composite image. Because this is a PSD, I'm going back into Lightroom and it still saves my entire layer stack in this PSD. If I opened this image into Photoshop, all of these different layers would still be there as well, which is really nice. So as long as it's a PSD file, those layers, you will always have access to them no matter what. If you flatten the file and make it into a JPEG or a TIFF, you'll lose all that information. So do remember that. Okay, so it's saved our image. Let's go ahead and close this out and we're gonna jump back over to Lightroom. The next image that I want to work on is I want to talk to you guys about how to access all of this through Perfect Effects. Perfect Effects gives you the ability to use textures and borders. Perfect Black and White, which will hit right at the end, only gives you access to borders. Perfect Black and White does not give you access to your textures. So if you want to add a texture to a black and white image, you have to, have to, have to add it in layers or or effects. So do remember that that is a, a strange side effect of the programs. Um, so if you're gonna do textures, you gotta do it in, in layers or effects. Now, let's go ahead and we've got our image. We're gonna go ahead and pop this into effects. Now, when you're going through a program like Lightroom or like Aperture, you have the ability to make sure that your file is set as a PSD. In Aperture, it's through a preferences menu. Through Lightroom, it's through this edit photo menu. It'll automatically save it as a PSD file if you set that in your file format drop-down menu. If you're working through a program like Photoshop or Elements, it will automatically save it as a PSD when you click the save button. Um, if you have a layer stack, it'll either ask you whether you want to save it as a PSD or whether you want to flatten your file out. So just in case there's going to be a question about that, you always have the ability to save as a PSD if you want to. All right, so go ahead and click edit. It'll take us into effects. Now, perfect effects gives you a little bit more and a little bit less versatility than layers. I know that's a little, a little confusing. Um, perfect effects is a great place to do all of it. Layers is a good place to finish your image off with a border or a texture. Effects is a good place to go if you need to edit your entire image. So let's say for this photo, I want to add uh, a starter filter, like the sunshine filter. This is a really good one. I want to add a little bit of a sunny glow to my image. I can do that here before I apply whatever I'm going to add. Now, for this image, and to access your borders and your textures, go over to the Filter Options pane and open up the Filter drop-down menu. The Texturizer is self-explanatory, as is the Borders category. We're going to start out with the Texturizer. Now, up in the top right here, there is a Category drop-down menu. Up at the top will be all of the prepackaged on one textures fabric, metal, and so on. Down below will be your user textures. There's Liz's textures, as well as my bokeh textures. And I can choose which ones I want to add. So let's, let's use these bokeh textures here. I'll open up the texture drop-down menu, and these are all of the ones that I have access to applying. 
Now, for this image, I am going to end up choosing this one. It's called Boca 010, Boca 10. And this is the one that I like to use when I create some sort of light leak or sunspot look on my images. If you have the ability to access this, it is one of the coolest textures to apply. It works on images of landscapes, it works on images of objects, it works on portraits, all different types of images, and you get this really cool bright spot look on your photo. It's really fun. So I'll go ahead and select that option there. Now, the way that you edit this texture is not the same way as you do inside layers. It's added as a separate filter in your filter stack, but you don't have access to the ability to do things like transform the layer and so on. However, you do have a whole bunch of happy sliders down here that give you the ability to readjust. So the first is going to be the mode and the opacity. I'm gonna pump up the opacity to 100 here. Now you have the normal mode, which is pretty much the same as the overlay blending mode. Subtle is the soft light blending mode. And then there's lighter, which is screen and darker, which is like multiply. So they're relabeled here in this mode dropdown menu, but they're the same that you saw inside of perfect layers in that blending mode dropdown menu. You just only have four options here. Now, for this one, I'm going to go ahead and choose lighter and I will adjust the opacity accordingly to keep it nice and bright. Now, the next thing that I want to show you here is going to be your scale section. This is how large and how the texture is situated. The scale slider adjusts how big it is. So if I move that scale over, it's going to create this huge orange dot and it's going to cut out all of the excess around the edge. The rotation and the flip buttons down here give you the ability to readjust which part of your image you want the texture applied to. So this texture here is, you can see it in the preview, it's kind of like the light source is coming from one corner and I want that to come from one of the top corners. So flipping this is going to work a lot better than leaving it the way that it is. A sun leak wouldn't come from the bottom right hand corner. It doesn't make sense, especially for this image. So I'm going to want to flip it so that it looks like the light source is coming from a different direction. And I can choose where I want that to be. It's totally up to me. However, you can play around with this depending on what you want to do. We'll go ahead and lower the opacity again. Now right in the middle is going to be your hue, saturation, and brightness sliders. The hue is self-explanatory. You can adjust the hue of the layer there so I can play around with what color I want it to be. Maybe I like the green and yellow versus the orange and yellow. The saturation of just the texture. So I can oversaturate it or I can actually desaturate it if I want to create more of a monochromatic light leak look. So we'll go ahead and maybe we'll desaturate it just a tad. And then I can also affect the brightness. So how bright it is or how dark it is. This is completely up to you. And each one of these adjustments is manual. So Everything that you do can be readjusted if you want it to be. Now, once I'm done with this texture layer, you also can go through and access masking tools. Just like in layers, you've got your brush and your masking bug. The brush might be one that I would use for this image. Maybe I don't necessarily like it on the bottom part of my photo right here. I would suggest as you're working with textures and painting in and out, especially on one like this, where I want that light leak style, it's just not working with the entire photo, go up to your tool options bar and lower the opacity. When I take the opacity slider and I move that down closer to 20 or 30, I can slowly paint out the texture without it looking really fake. Um, so keep your feather high and your opacity low and then go through and choose very carefully which parts of your image are going to be affected. Now, I still get that light leak on the bottom, but it's not so intense that I can't see the plane. 
and it's got this really cool kind of sunspot thing. It's going right down over my image. It looks a little bit more natural and a little bit less jarring than it did before. Now, when you're working with borders here, you get a very similar set of adjustments. I'm going to do the same thing. I filter drop down menu and choose my borders. You're going to go to your category first. Here you'll see a whole bunch of the ones that we saw earlier. I've got my personal ones as well as the ones that I have access to that are created by On One. My favorites are the emulsion borders because they create this really cool, uh, back in the days of film, you used to be able to do these Polaroid transfers, or when you pulled the emulsion strip off of instant film, you would get these really cool kind of smudged edges. Um, you can still create that look today. There's a lot of instant film still out there, which is really great, um, but it's a little bit harder to reproduce. And so I really like these because it reminds me a lot of when I used to shoot film. Um, one of the other ones that I really love is the antique category because I shoot a lot of engagements and weddings and that kind of thing. And they always like these really cool old camera style borders. Um, I am going to scroll down and I am going to choose this burned borders category because I really like this awesome like acid burn around the edges. And I can go through and I can choose which ones I like best for my image. Now, once you have a border selected, one of the things that you'll notice is this is this is eating really, really far into my photo. On the bottom right down here of the filter options pane, there's a section thickness fit image. The fit image one is the option that I go to first. When I take this slider and I move it over to the right, it shrinks the photo in so that I can see more of it. Now, when I push it too far, what you'll see is it's basically created like a separate photo layer. My original image is still underneath, which can be a very good option, especially for borders like this one. Even if there's a little bit of the edge that may be showing, because my original photo is behind this image, I'll still be able to get just a little bit of sky and some of those burn spots on the top and the bottom. So play around with that fit image until it works well with your photo. Mine works around 10, that seems to be good. Now, the other way that you can do this is by adjusting the thickness slider. This is how thick the border is around the edge of your photo. When I push this to the right, it's going to thin it out and push it closer and closer to the edge of the canvas. Again, when you're working with borders like this one that have this kind of strange burned effect to it, if I go too far, I'm gonna cut off a large portion of the border. However, maybe I prefer that. So I really like the fact that when I push it out to about 10, I get this kind of cool edgy look and maybe that's enough for me. If I wanna save the entire border, I would probably drop the thickness down closer to three or four. And then I can play around with my fit image to try and get that fit into place. Now, just like with the texture, you have your mode menu here. You have a couple more options when you're working with borders, just because borders are gonna be a little bit different. We have a whole bunch of different options. I'm gonna leave it at normal. It's the only one that's gonna work with this border. I have a brightness slider, which is not gonna do anything because this is just a plain white border. I have saturation and hue sliders. All of these aren't going to work. Again, this is a plain white border. There's nothing I can really do to this except just leave it alone. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click Apply, and it's going to save these changes and bring me back into Lightroom. And I want to talk to you about editing borders and being able to adjust things like the color of the border. It's probably going to be one of the last things that I talk about, and then I'm going to jump into perfect black and white. So I want to show you guys a little bit about editing borders, and then we'll also um, talk a little bit about where to access all of this stuff inside black and white. So got this image. There's a cute dog. It's my friend's dog. I like to use this photo because I get to start puppies while I work. And we'll go to plugin extras and choose perfect photo suite. I have a very strong affinity for French bulldogs, which I think is what this dog is. They have dorky little ears and smushed faces and... I like their little smushed faces. 
Okay, so when you're inside perfect layers and we jump over to the user extras in the backgrounds category or the borders category, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up this right down here, the halftone frames. So if you don't know what a halftone pattern is, um, look it up on the internet. It's super cool. Um, it's this series of small dots that help create. The dots get smaller and larger and change from white to black to create an image. Halftone patterns are what used to create all of the printing ever. Um, we still use a very similar idea to the halftone pattern when we do color-based printing, but halftone is very popular when you're still doing things like screen printing or some sort of printing-based process that's monochromatic. Um, there are also still a lot of printers nowadays that use a halftone-based pattern, and you can access creating your own inside Photoshop. Graphic designers out there are probably going to know what this is. Um, it used to be very popular. It's not as much anymore, unfortunately. Um, but it's one of my favorite patterns, and I think it's super cool. So this is what we're going to use today. Now, when I've got my pattern all set, I'll double-click to add it as a layer. We'll click OK. I am going to select my transform tool. Now one of the things that you're going to notice is my image is vertical, not horizontal. There's also a rotate button when you have your transform tool selected so you can actually rotate the border so that it fits a little bit easier. And then you can click the fill button. If you need to stretch it out, feel free. I'm going to have to stretch this just a little bit to make it fit. So we'll go through and go ahead and do that and click apply. Now, just like we did before when we were edit editing the texture, we can also edit the border. I have the border layer chosen inside my filter stack, in, in, inside my layer stack, inside perfect layers, and I want to take this into effects to add a filter to it. So I'm going to go up to effects. And it's not going to affect my, my underlying image. It's only going to affect this border. Now, if you want to add some sort of color to the border, I suggest you use something called a photo filter. You can either find it on the left-hand side in the filters library, and you'll see it's got some basics like cooling and warming filters. You can also just go straight to that filter drop-down menu again and choose photo filter from there. So completely depends on where you like to be. Now, if you want to adjust the color of the filter, you're going to click on this little color swatch here. So there's a color section. The strength is how strong it is on your image. If I push this all the way over to 100, I get this really crazy, like, bright blue border. When I click the color swatch, it opens up this select color dialog, and this is where I can change it from, for instance, white to black. Let's say that I want to create more of a soft gray. I can choose kind of this softer gray color. I'm going to make the gray a little bit warmer. We'll go ahead and click OK. There we go. OK, so I've got this nice soft gray. It's got this warmish tone. Go ahead and click OK. You want to make sure that the strength is all the way up to 100. If you start dropping it down, it'll get lighter and lighter and closer to white. So if I'm adding a color to a border, I want to make sure that that, that string slider is all the way up to 100. The saturation slider will only affect um, the color range of the image. It's not going to do much when you choose the color. So I would leave all of this section down here completely alone. Now, when I go ahead and click Apply, doo -doo -doo -doo, I have my new layer. It's here in Perfect Effects. I have my original layer as well. I want to show you this super cool thing that you can do. And it's one of those, it's one of those things that I discovered that I really like to do. And it's a lot of fun. I like to combine borders. And uh, there's almost no one that will probably tell you to do this unless you're creating like pin line effects. But I think it's really cool, especially when you're working with something like this. So if you will remember, our original border was white. Our new border is gray. I'm going to leave that white border on just by turning that eye icon on. I'm going to select my gray border and choose the transform tool. Now, before we make any changes, I'm going to zoom out. 
You can do that by pressing Control or Command minus on your keyboard, and we'll zoom out a little bit. And with that transform tool chosen, I'm going to hold my mouse over the corners of my image, hold the shift key to make sure that I constrain the proportions, and I'm going to pull it out just a little bit. I'm going to do the top left corner and the bottom right. I'm just kind of guesstimating on how close it is to the edges. Uh, I'm not being exact just because it's not going to make a huge difference. And once I'm done, I'm going to click apply. Now when I zoom back in, I have this kind of cool gradient style effect. I've got my original white border and then my new grayish border around the outside. I was doing this earlier and I actually did three iterations of this border. One that had this color on it, and then we'll add a photo filter here, just like we did before. And I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna choose a very similar color and we're just gonna make it darker than before. So it's a lot darker. We'll go, we'll go ahead and click okay. There we go. So now I've got an even darker border. We'll go ahead and click apply and I'll do the exact same thing that I did before. I'll jump back over to perfect layers. We're gonna zoom out and I'm gonna pull this layer out even more way towards the edge of my image. And there we go. And once it's gone through and it's saved that change, now I have this really cool, unique border that I built myself. It's the halftone borders that I have. It's eaten into the image, but I created this really cool gradient effect. And the other thing that you can do is if you want to soften these circles, you can actually add a blur to these, these halftone layers and you can create this really cool kind of softened look. And it's a nice gradient and it works really well on an image. So building your own borders is really easy by using the ones that you're given. You can change the colors of any of these <coughs> just by editing them inside Perfect Effects and you can combine them here in layers because each one of those adjustments will be on a separate layer. I would save this as a PSD file so that I could access it again later if I want to, and I can continue editing this photo if I ever need to. Now, I'm gonna go through, and the last thing I wanna show you really quickly is where to access borders inside black and white. It's super easy, it's on the right-hand side of the screen. There's a border pane. You can add borders here inside Perfect Black and White. However, I recommend that you do it in other places. You'll notice that the pane here doesn't have as many options as you had inside effects, as well as any of the options that you had inside layers. The only thing that you can do is select which category you wanna choose. So I chose the instant film category because I really like these. Um, these, are some of, these are some of my favorite borders. So I can select a border I can change the blending mode here if I want to. We can readjust. I'm gonna go down and choose the, where is it? The multiply option to get this kind of strange overlay. I can adjust the opacity and the size as well as the basic placement. I don't have access to being able to do things like adjust hue, saturation, brightness, any of those options that I had in effects, as well as any of the more advanced options by accessing this border as a separate layer. So if you like black and white, it's a great program to create black and white images. And if you want the border to just be placed on your image, that's great. But when I click apply, one of the reasons why I avoid the border pane here in black and white is because it's included on that black and white layer that the program creates. So I can't just turn the border on and off if I don't like it it comes along with the black and white editing and the monotone layer that was placed on the image. I can't go back and re-edit it if I want to, I have to start again from scratch. So my suggestion is going into black and white and then adding your layer separately if you want to. I find that works the best. I think it's a little bit more fun because you get to play around with your borders and you can access it from there. 